uh, questions? I um, have one from earlier, I'll quickly ask. Um, it, it seems that throughout as it, what you were explaining, throughout mm. the early ages into the medieval ages, mm. teaching religion, it was about teaching religion and saying, this is the way of things, men must be superior to women, et cetera, et cetera. Men uh, are more morally right and all of that stuff. Whereas... Mm -hmm. Jesus's teachings were more about teaching morality and not yeah. specifically to choose, to, to learn, to grow in wisdom. Uh, wisdom. Yes. Leslie, over to you. Yeah, I just want to ask for origin because I want to look into yeah. it more. Um, he saw Eve as a symbol of the human soul. Uh, so what, what did he mean by that? Like the human soul is... A desire he saw, to be more like God or curiosity. Yes. yes. Um, so uh, the quest for knowledge, for wisdom, to be more, to learn, to strive, uh, really at any cost. I want to uh, learn and grow and evolve. And that's really what he saw. And um, unfortunately, um, uh, Origin ended up becoming a, uh, uh, being sort of, a heretic, so they they um, stopped anyone who um, followed his uh, path of teaching, but um, which, as I said, is in my opinion unfortunate. Um, the Catholic and even the um, uh, Eastern churches, it, before they're split, especially, but after even uh, more in different ways, um, decided what was and wasn't allowed. Same thing happened with the Cathars in France later, etc. So, hmm. uh, Archie, you have a question? Yeah, I'll try to see if I can form it well. But uh, just going back to what, when Leslie was making the point too, like, hey, if no one has kids, then it's going to be the end of society. Mm. Uh, and, Very quickly, yes. Yeah. Western China is facing. And it, uh, and your your answer too made me think of a word I had to look up in the paper too. The the esto, um, eschatological argument. Um, and I looked it up, and then I realized, oh, I have heard it before too, because it's. Uh, I remember reading it in George Gilder's Life After Google, talking about imitizing the eschaton. And then Leslie even said it too, like, yeah, they use it as fear. Mm. But I guess my question would be, it almost seems like it does go to control. And then how do we see it in, in, in our world today? Is the same thing happening? Because, and I'll say like an AI example, and I think when George Gilders did it too, he would say during the Industrial Revolution, the Marxist, you know, would use that, hey, industry is going to, you know, it's going to bring the end of the world. They use that as fear to take control. Well, it's growth and, and change versus stagnation and the same. Um, and it can be seen in uh, modern literature. Um, Anne Rand in Anthem, Anthem wrote about uh, societies that had stagnated. Um, others in the past have done the same. And we have religions and others who embrace the same, the, the unchanging, the um, sort of backwards. Um, for a long time, Egypt did that. And because of their isolation and, and defensible position, they were able to. And that didn't last forever. And they got conquered over and over. But um, uh, equally, uh, we see it now. With, uh, it, it gets into a lot of uh, socialist and pseudo-socialist ideas, um, the sort of anti-growth movement that has evolved and now calls itself um, uh, sort of the environmental movement, uh, where we want to destroy growth in society because uh, we need to save it, really. And, and they use the same thing as fear of we're going to destroy the planet, destroy humanity, so it's almost the same tactic. 
Yeah, and you try and argue and you say, but we could make new technology that will solve that. No, you can't. That'll just make it worse. And, and then you already have answered my part of my other question of, of how it affects society as a whole, but not only using the fear to control, but also, you know, they interpret or construe, you know, these stories in ways, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how, how are the stories construed today? And then also to, for control and, and, you know, dividing people on identity attributes. Mm -hmm saying, hey, men or women are, you know, less or more valued in society for whatever reason. And then the same thing happening today, maybe not based on gender identity, well, mm. or, but all other identity attributes. Yep. It just seems to me like they're, they're dogmatist, interpreting mm. in ways to control people that, you know, in the short term, like keep them in power or something. And learn from that yep. into today. Um, so another interesting little thing that people haven't realized and, and people didn't think, um, uh, I've had people argue that uh, my use of uh, the Red Queen thing uh, in the early part of Bitcoin is wrong and it didn't exist back then. Uh, it didn't exist in mainstream game theory and other stuff. Um, it was used biblically going back to the, uh, the 80s. Uh, Red Queen game is actually... Um, um, used first by biblical scholars. Yeah. I, I was just going to also ask. Did, uh, yeah. So like um, uh, Barnett and Haas and their Red Queen uh, organizational evolution and um, biblical myth and, and linking those. Um, so Red Queen games actually have a, um, a theological and uh, religious link as well. But then quite a lot in Bitcoin does. <laughs> I was, I was sorry. I don't know. Joel's going to ask one too, but I was actually no, going to go ahead. I, I, I was as just, I was reading it, was the mm -hmm. was the Red Queen brought up in this chapter? I think so. But as I was reading it, something yes, it I've was. always I Bitcoin in the in this class, but something I've always have wanted to ask too is, you know, mm -hmm. hey, it's it be, people talk about the importance of understanding economics and the incentives, mm -hmm. the computer science, and the design. But to me, it's uh, even the embedding of the incentive system is to understand like human nature um, and what motivates people. Oh, and, and just to ask you directly, how much of uh, how much of your background in theology and in reading, you know, Plato and philosophy was needed to be able to to actually design the system? As opposed, as compared to maybe, hey, your knowledge in computer science and your knowledge in economics and that sort of thing. Um, there is an overlap. I mean, it's, of course, much more um, computer science and economics and things. Um, but the reality here is um, they all link into each other. Now, um, the important part of this is to note that um, um, how you see individuals um, and we choose to be honest or we choose not to be and of course there's a biblical aspect of that but there's also other aspects of that in social psychology and things too so but um, uh, i believe we have a choice of being honest or not and uh, if we incentivize people to do the the honest thing they will Sorry. I've been um, when you talk about I mean, the ring of guide Jesus mm -hmm. always in that that had to be in the back of your sorry I'll let, I'll stop after this that just always it's just oh, that had to be your mind for the entire design because mm. I mean that, well that that was always the, the problem the is, yeah the the problem I always saw with um, what Tim May um, sort of talked about in the early days uh, and what I wanted to fix was um, everyone keeps going around cryptocurrency. It needs to be anonymous, but it doesn't. If it's too anonymous, then people will always end up doing something wrong. Uh, it's the, the concept in the ring of gaijis of um, invisibility. We, we start, we think that we can use it well, but it just doesn't need to be like the ring of Sauron or uh, in Lord of the Rings. It just naturally our own human nature Changes this, so. 
I'm going to throw in really quickly that um, mm-hmm. I've, I've a fair few times argued about the ideology and philosophy <laughs> behind Bitcoin <clears throat> is it, like an overlay to the foundation of where it all came from. And I, I think I've always I've thought for a long time, actually, that your theology PhD, you know, a lot of it stems from it. You know, you can see it, it, it in each class. I, I see parts of it. Uh, how it seeped through but i'm going to pass over to tom quickly as he mm-hmm. has his hand raised yeah thanks yeah i mean what i got from the paper was sin entered through sexual intercourse you know the purity was with mary not having intercourse for the birth of jesus and that is where i mean i think even today we can argue that that's a big problem. And you know what I mean? Like, I mean, when you, when you're, when people are not married, whether you choose that's good or bad, I think it causes a lot of issues in society. I mean, am I correct on saying that? that well, was- uh, it, It's actually, I mean, um, it's the Jordan piece, the Peterson bit here with um, people when they're young, don't realize that sex is emotionally powerful. Yeah, and they think they can control themselves and their bodies, and well, most teenagers can't. Well, I'd say no teenager can if you actually want to be honest. <laughs> they like to believe they can, but yeah, what can we say? But, but what wasn't wasn't that isn't that somewhere in the Bible that that's that was kind of like taught that until you're married, even even up until that 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 marriage marriage of becoming man and woman become one, that there should be no mm. sexual intercourse. Yeah, I mean, it didn't ever happen that way in reality because people got betrothed and things happened. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Tom, so you got yours. Um, Brett. Um, Brett. Brett next. Yeah, uh, you had mentioned the mystery schools and uh, it sounded to me a little bit like, you know, there was an overarching perspective that sort of it was our way or the highway in terms of, mm. you know, an, an official narrative of, of the way that um, that this uh, knowledge was to be passed down, including the mm-hmm. ability for only a certain group of people to be literate. Um, mm. And do you think that it could be fair to say that the mystery schools represented a little bit more of the edges, quote unquote, edges of the network when it came to when it came to. Um, actually passing information down to, you know, ordinary people, quote unquote, serfs that maybe were looked at as not being worthy of having that information, but nevertheless, we're still able to um, to access it through these schools. Is that a fair characterization? Well, yes and no. But I mean, right back from Roman, there's always um, Gnostic or, or heretic uh, type societies that now we have the, um, um, like the Masons and things like this, and they uh, still act, but um, people always like something that's a little bit, you know, well, not everyone, but there's always people who are attracted to the sort of edge, so to speak, and think that um, because it's more occult, um, like in Judaism, the Kabbalah, that uh, uh, it must be there. We have the same thing in Islamic religions, for instance. You have the more mystic Sufi um, uh, sort of side of things. So there's always people who are attracted to that. All right, at that, I'm going to call it a night and um, let you guys keep talking if you want Can to. I, yep. Um, and, just mm-hmm. wanted to ask if, if Leslie had a really quick one for you just before you went. No problem. It's just really quick. I was just saying um, from what I've read of the Bible for this philosophy course, I'm far into Matthew for now. I don't know any point in the Bible that has talked about victimhood, being a victim. And so I find it interesting that these church monks, scholars continue to bring up, well, the poor man was victimized. Yet, so, no more. do you know what meek meant? It means patient, patience. That's part of it, yes. So I'll give you an example. A noble, a knight who didn't beat up peasants randomly was considered meek. It's really strength under control. 
So uh, someone yeah, who okay, is yes. strong but can be humble. I, I'm intelligent, but I'm not going to belittle you. I'm strong and, and I've got weapons, but I'm still going to treat you well. It's not like we see a lot of the, the, the idea now that meek is um, pitiful and victim. Victims aren't meek. That is victims. Meek is someone who is actually strong and uses their strength in the right way. So th there's been a large sort of movement to, for some reason, to undermine that concept, which is mm. quite annoying in my opinion. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. Right. You're welcome. All right. Okay, All right. everyone. Have a good night. Much. Um, thank yeah. you, Craig. Everyone say thanks. Thank you, Craig. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay.